Hey, this is Joe from JoeCollinsTurner.com and TestTalks.com, a blog and podcast dedicated to all things test automation related. Today, I want to go over a super mini course on visual validation testing using Selenium with Apply Tools. So you might be asking, what is visual validation testing? Visual validation testing is a quality assurance activity that is meant to verify that an application's UI appears correctly to users. This will make more sense when we take a look at how to add visual validation checkpoints to an existing Selenium script that tests the Pluralsight's homepage. The problem is many people confuse visual validation testing with traditional functional testing done with tools like Selenium and QTP, which are designed to help you test the functionality of your application through the UI, like navigating to Pluralsight, clicking on its links, or performing a search for a course. But when we're talking about visual validation testing, we want to make sure the UI itself looks right to the user and that each UI element appears in the right shape, color, size, and location. We also want to ensure that it doesn't hide or overlap any other UI elements. One of the benefits of using Pluralsight is the ability to easily browse content. But what if there were some UI bugs that made it difficult to do this in certain browsers? Or what if it made it difficult to sign up to become a member? These types of issues are not only embarrassing to the company, but it could also cripple the functionality of an application and cost a lot of money and lost revenue. To make matters even worse, many of these types of tests are really difficult to automate using traditional methods, and they tend to end up being manual tests. Too many manual tests will slow down your development process. That's where Apply Tools comes in. Apply Tools is a cloud-based service that allows you to automate the testing of all the visual aspects of your application. Using just one validation point, you can check all the fields on your application without having to create a bunch of separate assertions for each and every UI element on the screen. Less assertions equal less code, making your automation tests more maintainable. Apply Tools was developed from the ground up for visual validation, and its sophisticated algorithm was designed to handle many pixel issues that most other image-based testing tools have a hard time handling. Because of this, Apply Tools will help reduce false failures in your tests due to small pixel changes. A side benefit of using visual validation is that it acts as a more reliable synchronization point since it's waiting for an actual image to appear on the screen before running the rest of your test. This helps reduce flaky tests that randomly pass or fail due to sync issues. You can also run the same test across multiple OS and browser combinations to make sure your application appears consistent on all platforms. So let's take a look at how to add visual validation testing using Apply Tools to an existing Selenium test that tests the Pluralsight homepage. So I went ahead and already created a simple Selenium script that basically all it does is it goes to Pluralsight, it clicks on the link, and then it closes the browser. But now I want to add visual validation testing to this using Apply Tools. So the first thing you'll want to do is if you're using Maven like I am, you want to go ahead and add the Maven dependency for Apply Tools. If you're not using Maven, all you need to do then is just add the job file to your project. Once we have a reference to Apply Tools in our POM file, we can go ahead and import the Apply Tools packages that we'll be using for this test. We'll go over what each of these are for later on within our code, but you just need these three eyes, match level, and rectangle size to start with. Later on, we'll also be introducing some JavaScript code to break our tests. So for that, we'll also import the JavaScript executor. So I'm gonna stop this off by initializing the eyes object. Eyes is the main object for the Apply Tools SDK. Once we have a reference to the eyes object, we can then access all its methods. So what I also wanna do is I wanna also set the API key. So this API key is unique to my account. Yours will be different. You can either hard code it in your script like we've done here, or a better practice would be to go ahead and put it in a properties file, just because it'll make it easier to maintain in the future. Next, we're gonna use the set match level method. Apply Tools can test the UI in four different comparison levels. The first one is strict, which will detect small changes in large images like a plus sign changing to a minus. I've worked on medical applications that use X-ray images, so being able to detect these types of changes really helps find issues in the software that would be very hard to validate even manually. But for a dynamic website like Pluralsight, we'll use the layout option. The layout option ignores content changes and detects only layout changes. To actually stop visual testing in our script, we need to initialize the eyesopen method. The eyes.open method takes four main parameters. We're gonna first pass it the name of our web driver. In this case, we called ours driver. Then we wanna pass it the name of our application. So in this case, it's Pluralsight.com. Then we just need to pass it the name of our test. So I'm calling this Pluralsight Audition. 
This is important because this is the name that's going to be used going forward whenever we look in Apply Tools. This will actually make more sense when we look at the results of this test after we run it. And then we just want to pass it the viewport size. A predefined viewport size is what will be used for a browser window during this test. So this is where all the magic happens. This is Apply Tools Visual Validation Checkpoint. The check window command will take a snapshot of the current window and it's going to perform a smart visual comparison of that window with the baseline. Apply Tools can automatically scroll the image and stitch it together to get a screenshot of the entire page, even if that page is not visible within the browser window itself. Next, we're going to click on the Browse Courses link and then we want to take another check window of the Browse Courses page. So let's run this and see what happens. So basically, it's going to navigate to Pluralsight.com. It's then going to take a snapshot of the first window. It's going to click on the Browse Courses link, and it's going to take a snapshot of the second window. And both those pages, because it's the first time we ran this test, it's going to create a baseline image. When we rerun this test, all future tests then will compare themselves against this baseline. So now let's take a look at the results. In our console window, Apply Tools is telling us, please approve a new baseline. So we just need to head on over to Apply Tools and approve those baselines to be used for all our future tests. So as we can see, our first check window image appears and it captured the whole screen. And so I'm just going to accept this. Yes, this is what I want to use as the baseline going forward for that first check window. The second check window appears and it's the browser crosses page and it took a snapshot of the whole screen. And this looks correct to me. So this is what I also want to use as my baseline for the second check window. And then I'm going to save the results. Let's run the test again and compare the current results with the baseline images we just created. So the test ran again and there were no failures. Let's go back into Apply Tools and see the results. Apply Tools keeps a running history of all the past tests that you ran. So notice the test that we just ran past. If we click on it, we can see the results. So here's the image that was captured for our check windows. So the first check window, it's the first Pluralsight course, and the second one, browser courses. Notice there is no differences. If there were any differences that were captured during the test run, they would be highlighted in purple. So we can use the side-by-side -side view option to compare the differences. And notice there are none. So this is cool, but if you're like me, you got into testing to break things. So let's force a failure in our test and then see what a failure looks like in Apply Tools. So to force a failure, I'm just going to execute some JavaScript that basically takes the browser course title and it moves it 100 pixels to the right. So when we rerun this test, it's going to compare the current test results against our baseline and it's going to flag it because it's going to notice a layout difference. Let's run it and then take a look at the results within Apply Tools. So the test is going to do exactly what it did before. It's going to navigate to the main Pluralsight course. It's going to take a screenshot of the first course. It's then going to click on the Browse Courses link. But before it takes the second check window, it's going to move that browser course title 100 pixels to the right. Then it's going to run the second check window. And Apply Tools is going to fail because it's going to notice that the current results do not match our baseline. So notice how the Browse Courses moved 100 pixels to the right. So as we expected, the test failed, and it gives us the URL of where to navigate to actually see the error message. So I'm just going to copy that and navigate to the error. So now notice there's some pink purple highlighted in our screenshot. This tells us that there's a difference between our current test results and the baseline. So if we did a side-by-side -side comparison, we could see that the Browse Courses title is definitely different. We could also see that by clicking on this highlight different locations, it'll point out the differences within our screenshots. If we had some new development and our UI actually changed, we could accept this as the new baseline going forward, or we can reject it, or if it's an actual bug within our application, we can open up a bug within Apply Tools. So that's the end of this module on how to add visual validation testing to your Selenium test. Hopefully you've discovered how to use visual validation testing to enhance your existing tests to give you the UI coverage that your current test suite is probably missing. We all know the sooner that we catch issues with our application before our customers, the chances are better that our customers will be delighted with our application. Visual validation testing is just another technique in your testing toolbox to help you achieve this.